right. Uh, welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. My guest today, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Donnie DeCecco. Hey, everybody. Master of none. I don't know. I, you you know? asked me to come up with a title. That's the best thing I could think about because I'm like, ah, you know, I do this. I do that. I do that. I'm a father. Uh, you know, I make chili dogs. Uh, I'm a drummer, you know. Uh, I trim, uh, you know, trees at my house i sometimes do the dishes very poorly as my wife puts it um <laughs> you know so i figure fuck it just master and unworks you know i like that yeah what is that was it um aziz ansari didn't yeah. you have a show called yeah. master and none yeah and I, nice. I dug that show too i'm waiting for did. the for the next uh, season to come out so i could watch it i kind of figured they weren't going to do one after i don't know i, I watched the first season and then yeah i hate that they're like getting our uh, dicks wet with all these cool you know, like series and everything, and you're just like, oh, wow, man. And then, like, dude, they just fall off, you know? I think Love did that. Master and Nun is doing that. Yeah. Uh, they made, like, another um, Ozark, but I don't even know if they're making, like, a fourth uh, season. Or... I think they are making a fourth season of Ozark. Like, okay. they're wrapping that. That Ozark's getting wrapped up in a bow, I think, so that'll well, be good. good. Because it's that's a great show. Yeah, or like, what was the one? I was watching the Kevin Spacey political one. I can't even think of the name of it. House of Cards? House of Cards. I liked that. And then I guess he got caught grabbing dicks, and, and they were just like, no more House of Cards, man. And it's funny. I go back now and watch, like, uh, Kevin Spacey movies, having known that. Yeah. And I'm just like, there's an air of creepiness there, you know? Like, I don't know if it happened after, you know, the... Uh, you know, like, they caught everything, but it just... You watch, like, now, like, uh, like uh American Beauty. Yeah. And you're just like, that's a 17-year-old chick you know, that he's, that he's uh, you know, going crazy over, you know? So it kind of makes sense a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, you know, he's always been kind of a creepy guy uh, and kind of a dick, right? Like, yeah. he's been that, that, that dickhead Air fucking... Of- Thumbs, thumbs up with that dude, you know. But I was yeah. just like, oh, he's just acting. His character's a creep. And it's like, no, you can smell it through the camera. <laughs> yeah, he's, I don't. I don't really think he's acting. I think it just kind of, it's yeah. his personality shining through. When, yeah. he, when he was acting nice, I think that was acting. Yeah. Dude, well, he's acting <laughs> trying right. to be a good person or something. So I think I saw him in uh, he coming out in something new too. Like he's getting his career back. I don't know. I don't know. The the Me Too movement kind of. Is had its fucking had its that, time, yeah. and now things are getting back to normal where Hollywood can just do whatever they want. And I don't uh, know, man. I, I, don't, I don't know. I I really hope that's not the case. I hope mm-hmm. that uh, you know more things uh, pop up and you know more people speak out and uh, you know the truth is revealed and you know and uh, and we move away from you know whatever the fuck's going on because I, I feel like we're all in dark as far as. Uh, you know the the pedophile movement, the the slave trade, you know the sex trafficking, all that. Oh yeah, and, that's terrible. Well, yeah, and and I think we're just we're we're scratching the tip of the iceberg with that, and I think that all this Me Too movement was kind of the tipping point, you know. And I hope that you know us as a society wants to learn more and figure out more, and you know, and and heal what the hell is happening because it's just you know you hear about. I I got three kids, and I'm just like I can't let them go out and play yeah you know i can't let them ride their bikes like in, in their cul- in the cul-de-sac because i'm worried about some dude you know snatching them up you know or going i you know when jared goes to uh, walmart with uh, my daughter bella or something you know just I, I worry i'm nervous it's not the same time that you know when we grew up and we had very little parent supervision. Yeah. You know, like we we're, fine. <laughs> we were out all day and didn't come back until the streetlights were on, you know. But now it's like, dude, I have actual fears of, you know, uh, you know, that being taken away, you know. Ah, man. Uh, I think a lot of it is uh, a little bit of like fear mongering as opposed to like actual credible like. I mean, you can let your kids go outside and play, man. I mean, the kids are out here playing all the time in my neighborhood. Nobody's really kids aren't popping up missing, you know. Like uh, it's, you know, if if these pedophile rings have been around, they've been around since before we were born, yeah. and uh, and you know, we were out running, like you said, running around all day and all, you know, until the sun went down. Maybe it's uh, just the, uh, the the spread of of news, you know, and and well, yeah. fake news, and yeah, the fear mongering. Yeah, I get all that, but I mean, you do, you know, hear cases of you know, uh, you know, kids getting abducted a lot more 
than you did, you know, 30 years ago, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know. It, it might be fear-mongering because, trust me, I get that too. You know, like uh, fear sells media better than anything. Yeah, it's going to sell. It's going to get more clicks. It's, yeah, exactly. You're going so, I mean, to get people to show up and, like, actually, like, oh, another another pedophile thing. Let me take care of my kids and make sure they're safe. I'm going to read this whole motherfucker. And it's like, ah, uh, you know, and then yeah, they're just and the, constantly you, pushing you on in. this agenda on you that, of course, is a, a, a you know a real problem, right? Yeah. But at the same time, kids got to live their life. Yeah, they, they do, but it's it's just different nowadays. Keeping them in a the box is only going to fuck them up. Yeah, I know, man. But I, I honestly, I I can't I can't let my kids go out and play like I did. You know, it's just uh, yeah. It, it's a different world. It's a different time, and everybody I talk to is just like, yeah, man, it's it's a different world. You can't do that nowadays. You know, and and I'm not one to take other people's opinion, but it's just per, me personally. That's just how I feel about it, dude. I'm just like, yeah. you know, I I took my kids to the uh, park you know, the other day. And, uh, there's a, some dude, you know, younger guy, you know, he looked, looked, looked in shape or whatever, but he just had that look in his eye where it just, boom, my spidey sense went off. And, you know, I got my kids, you know, away from him, but then we're climbing the, doing the, you know, monkey bars and shit. And he just comes over and starts trying to coach my kids. You know, like, oh, yo, you got to reach across and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like giving him the death look like, yo, motherfucker, you want to back up out of my spot? You know, like, yo, yeah, how you doing? I'm like, uh, don't look at me. Come on, kids, get on your bikes. Let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah, that and is As soon creepy. as we got away, I'm like, kids, do you see that guy back there? I'm like, that's who daddy doesn't want you to look at, talk to. You see somebody like that, you get away. I'm glad he came up. I'm glad he, you got to see that kind of person because now you know. Who the fuck to stay away from? Yeah. Those creepy ass, glass eyed looking dudes that just <laughs> kind of invite themselves into your situation with no cause or nothing. You know, I'm <laughs> just like, stay away from people like that. You run straight home. You remind me of uh, Joey Diaz shtick where he uh, he's talking about going to the park with his niece and he sees some pedophile looking motherfucker sitting over in the, uh, on the bench just kind of creepily watching the kids and he goes go play with that guy over there real quick you know and he's like <laughs> he's, oh he's just like grinding up you know like waiting for this guy to do something inappropriate and he sends his niece over there to encourage some kind of bullshit and he's just oh like and God, I got my eyes on this motherfucker <laughs> 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 just oh waiting to God. beat the shit out of him uh, damn yeah he, he, I forget exactly what he did to the guy but there's a good stand up bit where he's just like I don't know if you've ever watched Joey Diaz, but no, the guy's yeah. an animal. Oh, He's wow. a friggin' animal. And, uh, his stand-up is, is ruthless. He's oh. just talking about growing up in the Bronx and, and just being like an Italian dude in New York with like that whole scene, like that, that, that kind of mobster-ish. Yeah. He's not a mobster, but like that mobster-ish that, that scene, right? Yeah. That stigma. He's like, yeah, like people ain't fucking around, you know? And, and yeah. Joey Diaz grew up in that environment, you know, doing really nefarious things. And his stand-up is fantastic I, I don't think I'd, I don't think I'd ever put my kids up for bait like that. Yeah. You know, just, just in case, uh, you know, I wasn't fast enough. Uh, you know, what were you doing? Well, I was trying to set up this guy, you know, to see if he'd fuck with my kids so I could, uh, you know, uh, guilt-free kick the shit out of them, you know? like <laughs> Trying to beat the shit out of pedophiles at the yeah, park. Well, What's you know, the problem? Like I, I, was just, I was just testing this guy out using my kids as bait. What? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, nice. yeah, he's got, a, he's got a killer joke about that whole thing man oh that's funny i dude. like that motherfucker he also has a podcast very inspirational one and i like listening to monday mornings motherfucker gets down huh. yeah i need to be doing that kind of stuff too going out inspirational and, uh, well i the inspirational stuff and then uh but like uh once shit opens back up you know i'd like to get on stage and start doing some stand up and telling stories and telling jokes and kind of establishing that whole like build Entity. If you build it, they will come, man. Yeah. Or he will come. Whatever. It seems like fun. It seems like a lot of fun. Hell yeah, man. To go up and tell some jokes. What else are you going to do? Yeah. You know, well, I'm going to wait for the virus to end and then oh, <laughs> write dude. a bunch but of jokes. Vi viruses don't end, brother. Yeah, I know they you know, don't. They just mutate and whatever. I think it's just the, the fear mongering. <laughs> we talked about the fear mongering. The yeah. fear mongering that, that needs to end, you know? I mean, because I think we're all going to get it. Sooner or later, you know, uh, we're all going to get it, and hopefully we don't have any pre-existing conditions, and, and uh, we are able to 
you know, uh, build immunities naturally, you know, and, uh, and we fight it off and dude, it's just, you know, we, we go on living our lives, you know, it's the fact that we had everything taken away from us in the blink of an eye, you know, one day we're, you know, out doing our job, hanging out, chilling. And then the next boom, we're, we're at home, you know, counting shit tickets, you know, fucking yep. <laughs> freaking out, you know, cause, uh, cause wondering if we got enough rice, and beans, you know, for our family to survive, you know, and this shit fucking struck, man. It was, you know, who, who knew what it, it wasn't the virus I was scared of. It was just the fear and the mob mentality and fucking people wiping out grocery stores, you know, and just social economic collapse. That's, yeah. that's what I was worried about. You know, it's like not the fucking virus <laughs> worried about the human virus. Yeah. <laughs> now, thankfully, they they made it illegal to kick people out of like rental properties and stuff like that. But like, I was I was really mostly worried about once everyone starts losing their homes. Mm-hmm. I mean, now you're just going to have a bunch of people that are just pissed out on the streets. Yeah, pissed off. They're going to start kicking in doors and yeah. taking whatever they want because who cares anymore? Oh, you dude, know? I I went and got a shotgun. You know, yeah, I, of course. I, I was like, you know, <laughs> better to have it not need it you know it's like something that i feel like you should have in your house anyway you know because motherfuckers are crazy you know so people are unpredictable oh yeah you know and you just you never know you know it's better just to have it you know let the kids know hey we don't we don't fuck around with this you know go out in the desert show them what the fuck it does be like this could really hurt you you know but you know this, this is what daddy does to keep us safe you know Show them how to take it apart, put it back together, gun safety know, lessons. I'm the, I'm the, you know, let's teach them how to swim first and climb trees, and then we'll, <laughs> then we'll worry about assault rifles and all that shit. Uh, <laughs> shotguns are pretty easy to take apart and put back together. They're yeah. only a few pieces. Yeah, I, I've so. never done it. I don't know, man. Not really? Yeah, they're just like, I, I, I hopefully, hopefully I never have to fucking shoot it, you know? Maybe, unless it's like clay pigeons or whatever. Well, yeah, let's go out in the desert and, and make sure it works. Shoot some skeet, skeet. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that they're, it's fun. There's actually some killer videos online about it. Um, so your your there's your specific gun will be online, right? Like it'll be like 20 videos of how to dismantle it, lube it, clean it, put it back together, mm-hmm. and um, and I think with like a gun specifically, something that's like uh, your life depends on it functioning perfectly at the moment. Yeah. Uh, there's no do overs, right? In that instance, so it's like having your your gun knowing that it you dismantled it you cleaned it you saw everything you put it back together and then you went out and fired it it's like make sure it works parachute yeah it's like packing your own parachute it's like i know that this gun's gonna fire i Mm. made sure and i'm confident like i know how everything works in it and i i can take it apart and put it back together you know with my eyes closed and and it's gonna work it's gonna work um, but my dad was in fucking Nam, so like, <laughs> so was mine. But yeah. you, you don't talk about it. Not really. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'll ever get a, a word out of that guy other than it was fucking shit. It was war. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty much it, man. He yeah. he doesn't really need to be recalling all those memories. Yeah, it's they're brutal, man. They're brutal. My yeah. uh, my pop went to a PTSD clinic, and uh, so he's into talking about it now right like before it was just like don't talk, talk to about, about that it. yeah but once you once you open those floodgates and yeah. feels good it's therapeutic yeah exactly you know so but you know teach their own everybody's got their you know their way of doing things and you know oh yeah the way they the way they rock and roll yeah there's a, there's a crazy stories that i've had him uh tell me i have to i have to bring him on one time and just hang out with my pops on here that oh, dude, dude can talk more than i can that'd be great yeah, you know? yeah. It'd be a fun conversation. Fun conversation with that crazy bastard. I've been talking to my dad a lot too. I was actually just talking to him, uh, you know, outside the house here. You know, just because uh, he's going through radiation, and all that. He's got prostate cancer, and he's got, uh, you know, uh, heart issues. He had like two heart attacks last year, and you know, he's going to Cleveland Clinic to to get a second opinion. You know, he's got like forty six percent blockage, and you know, his uh, up front arteries. You know, and uh, so. Needless to say, I've been talking to him a lot more, and it's just cool to, like, get his perspective on things, and he's just, like, very whatever about it, you know, he's just like, well, you know, it is what it is, you know, like, I I gotta deal with it right now, he's like, my back fucking hurts, I could barely fucking walk, you know, like, uh, but, you know, it's either gonna get better, or I'm gonna die, you know, so it's like, he's very matter of fact about it, you know, and it's just like, well, what am I going to do about it? What am I going to cry about it? You know, he's like, he's very sure. tough about it, you know, yeah. but it's cool because he's opened up a lot more and, and we get a chance to chat a lot more, you know, and it's just, uh, it's really cool to 
to you know get inside his head so yeah bring your pops on man i think that'd be a great episode oh yeah i, yeah. I enjoy him a lot uh he's recently retired last year and uh he's kind of spent this whole year like figuring out how to exist without a job that's fun yeah he was one of those dudes that just grinded himself you yeah. know he was really really pushing hard at his job and and when he you know retired and he's just sitting there with his fucking hands and nothing to do with him he's really just losing his mind over it man what yeah a, yeah what am i supposed to do we we all we all feel better when we got a purpose in life you know yeah. when we're we're contributing and and we're getting things done i mean you know we get locked up in the mundane and you know and uh we each got our you know private battles that we're doing but you know it's easier to do when you when you got something to do you know when you got a job to go to and then when the, all of a sudden that stops you know you got to figure out something new you know movers shakers guys like you man you know like you never stop working no oh, yeah you know, no. so I, I won't i won't ever retire or anything i don't see what the point would be like yeah. i'm just gonna keep i do this because i love this shit right yeah, exactly. like i'm obsessed with like i can't not do this stuff no, then and then it'll take you to something else, and then you'll yeah. undiscover you'll discover that man. That's a, that's a beautiful life to have right there. You know when you, you know you're not just stuck to one thing. You, you you try out a lot of stuff, man. You know and and you oh, yeah. see what what makes you tick, and you become more of a, a whole person. I think you know when you when you disrupt your brain patterns and you don't follow down certain paths, you. You know, you, you just keep things fresh, you know, still, still waters, you know, they, they gain algae, you know, and then, you know, you got to keep that water fucking moving. So the, the pool remains clear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like if I just spent my whole life just going, I'm a bass player. And it's like, ah, that would have been boring. I mean, it probably would have been interesting, but like, yeah, you know, I, I mean, never taking the time to really learn how to play drums or piano and never taking the time to be a proper engineer and learn all this video stuff. And well, you do what you want to do. Shit. You know, you start off with bass, you know, and then you plug stuff in and you hear how stuff sounds and then you say, oh, that sounds fucking great. And you dive into that. You know, it's just it's uh, where our life takes us, you know, is mm. what makes us people. Yeah. You know, so. And now look at you, Mr. Religious Man. I have I have found uh, I got a big stack of religious books over there. Mm -hmm. I am really digging it. What's the general thesis that you're getting from from most religions? If you if you had to like say the g overall general thesis of most religions, what are the, what are they getting at? Uh, actually, uh, I've noticed a repetitive thing, and it's it's basically it's the, these are books and guides to making you a better person, right? There's a lot of it's a lot of stories of morality, mm -hmm. and a lot of like rules and laws that are based in you know reality that are like, hey, don't kill people, right? You know, mm -hmm. you shouldn't. Uh, uh, what was a good one in the uh, that I liked? It was like uh, when you loan money to people, right? Like you can you know take a, get a little percentage back, but he's like, but if you loan money to your brother, don't be charging that dude a percentage is your brother right like yeah. it's just simple rules to follow for life right but um so what i found like in like the buddhism the Taoism, the the hinduism kind of like the eastern philosophies they kind of go into the whole um this is the secret right to, this is the secret sauce so you're going to be more disciplined um and you're going to focus on getting rid of your aversions and your desires to things and um, and these are the steps you can take to be a better person and if you feel like it, right? Yeah. But they just go, you'll feel like it when you're ready. You know, you'll feel like it when you feel like it because you're going to go through this process of birth and death and birth and death infinitely until eventually you start hitting this point in the cycle of birth and death where you're like, oh, I think there's more to this, which is like where I'm at in my existence at this point. And this this cycle of my life, right? I went, oh, I'm not supposed to be doing all this fucked up shit to my body and all this sacrilege and, uh, you know, just, um, I don't know, all around just uh, deviant behavior, right? It's, it, it, at first, it feels like that instant gratification leads to, um, it, it gives you in pleasure real quickly, right? But yeah. then that goes away even faster than it came. And, and you're then, always, and then you're left empty. Yeah, and you're left empty, and um, and so my whole life I was always chasing the material, and always trying to like f get cool stuff and play cool video games and do awesome drugs and go mm -hmm. to great concerts, and uh, and you know like I, to me you know like at that point being very atheistic it was just like uh, that's all there is 
right? That's all there is to this game so that we're you, playing. you find so many things to fill you. Yeah. yeah. You fill that hole inside that. Yeah. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Dennis says that this, my, my, I have this hole and I, I like to call it my God hole, but I don't believe in God. Right. And he's just like, so I like to fill it with pussy. And that's, that's, that's Dennis. And I was always saying, but I, uh, I relate to that a lot where it was like, um, yeah, there was a hole in my life. And so, you know, I, I, I switched over to that hole, um, with the mantra I was discussing where I say, I am nothing. I know nothing. I am nothing. Right. Um, that kind of led me to, to the whole concept of like, well, you don't know if there's God or not. And all of a sudden I'm agnostic and I'm like, maybe I should read into this stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I started reading into it and I was like, maybe there's something to this. Right. So it's like with the Eastern side of things, you get, um, you get that discipline where they're just like, do it or don't do it. Right. Yeah. If you don't do it, I don't care. Right. You're going to die. You're going to be born again. And then you're, you're faced gonna... with the same dilemma. Do it or don't do it. Eventually, your soul will season enough, you know, or your, your energy will season enough to where you're like, oh, I'm going to pay attention to this stuff now. And I'm going to start following the Eightfold Path. And I'm going to start, you know, taking care of my mind and my body appropriately and to mm -hmm. love everything. And, you know, I will be aware that I am all things. Uh, that's, a, that's a beautiful place to be at I, yeah. I i recall having moments of 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 that in my life where i just i felt the world flow through me and every, i loved everything you know but and uh, it's like you you see other people that it's it seems like they're just like in a, a tumbler you know or like in a dryer and they're just floating around in there and you're stepped out and you're like oh my god i see the world and everything is beautiful and like it's it's a great you know, but life happens, man, it and, is. and it's a constant upkeep to stay in that mentality and that frame of mind, you know, and especially with life always happening around you. But yeah. to have sensed that and felt that, you know, so much more than so many other people that, that have never had that. Oh, yeah. You know, and, uh, and to know that it came from you, you know, that you experienced this and you touched God, so to speak. You know, like, you know that that's always out there. At least I do. You know, like, I, I might not feel like that all the time because I'm just swept up in the mundane, man. You know, like, I got kids and, you know, the coronavirus and fucking election and shit. And, yeah. You know, it's like it's all these distractions that happen around us that that uh, that blind us, you know, from the true reality of things. You know, all we need is love. You know, we are everybody. We're going through this together, you know, and, and we keep doing it until we uh, graduate yeah. you know until we uh, ascend you know so but um i think that just having known that and having felt that you know it's like it, it it puts you in a different mind frame where you're just like dude everything's all right you know like we don't have to worry about anything you know like um you really don't no you you get scared you know when you got to change stuff and you know shit happens but you Life push. is always changing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, what stays the same is you and mm -hmm. the person inside you. you so, know? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's that, uh, I think it's that separateness, that feeling that uh, I'm in this by myself, right? And like the world is a separate thing for me mm -hmm. as opposed to I am a part of this world. I came and out of this world. Together. My, my duty is to this world, right? Like, uh, you know, you, 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 you want to volunteer for things. You want to get out there and like love life and just be there for those moments that when you're needed right yeah. and as opposed to being wrapped up in your own bullshit because life inevitably is suffering life is just a series of terrible events happening to you with moments of joy in between right if you're just focused on the outside perspective if you're just focused on what's coming at you all mm -hmm. the time it's a lot of suffering it's a lot of all your friends and family are going to die you're going to lose jobs you know you're going to have sickness you're going to have all kinds of shit you're going to lose all everything well, all your pets are going to die negative. if yeah. you choose to, to if that's what you want to make your reality that'll be your reality well that is going to be your reality is what i'm saying right like that's there these are all inevitable things yeah. these are you're nobody's going to go through life without their mom not dying oh yeah everybody has to deal with that right everybody your dog's going to die <laughs> right like you have to deal with that yeah. the life is suffering and um so going through this game like trying to deny that fact, trying to deny, like, I don't like to say facts when I'm talking about ideologies, right? So like trying to deny that idea that, um, that life is suffering, 
and that you're going to suffer, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? It's like, well, I don't want to. Well, too bad. You're in a human body in these three dimensions with limitations. And even though you're, you, you're, your consciousness wants to be unbounded, you know, we're always like interested in growing and being um, bigger than we are at all times, right? And I always yeah. want to move on and grow and grow and grow. And, and I don't want these limitations on me because that's not how it works whenever you're not attached to this body. Like, I don't know if you smoked DMT and been totally yanked out of your physical being. No, no, I haven't. Um, but you have no limitations in that place, right? Like, that's really your pure energy consciousness state, right? And it's just thought creates and maneuvers your consciousness you just think things and they happen mm -hmm. and you can go anywhere and be anywhere and and time is irrelevant and um and i think there's this and there's this um incessant need to be that way right like the game we're playing where we're in these physical bodies these meat puppets that we're controlling um that's a game. It's an illusion. It's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a challenge, I think, that we presented ourselves for whatever reasons, right? I think uh, and, and a lot of these religious um, scriptures say it's for growth. It's for spiritual growth. It's, to, it's a test or it's a, it's a way to challenge yourself and, and develop your spirituality and grow and yeah. be a better person. Um, so, I mean, if you come at it that way, life becomes a whole different game. And, and you accept all these things that you... I do want to be boundless, but I'm not going to be. That's yeah, because you have limitations bound by your body. So, yeah, I mean, but I, I I think that you mentally can get to that place, especially through meditation and oh, big time. You know, like and and you could transcend, you know, and and feel and open yourself up to to feel, you know, things uh, just with your with your energy, with your aura, with your you know essence, you know. So I think that there is a way to you know to expand yourself and to get out of yourself it's just a matter of you know do you want to do that and do you have time to <laughs> we have to take that time right like yeah. in this life you have to take everything that you need right you, you have to go out and get it or you have to you have to sacrifice other things to make sure that you have time for the things that are important yeah um it's something so, I don't think our parents taught us or teach definitely us. Definitely not me. Something that I, I don't even think I could teach, uh, you know, my kids. You know, like I, it, it's just something that you naturally uh, happen across. You know, where you you know you kind of have horse blinders on, and then all of a sudden you start you know exploring yourself, and 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 you start seeing the world a little bit more clearer. And your eyes start to open and you, your heart starts to open and you feel things a little bit differently. And then, and then you want some more of that. So you expand on that and you grow. I think it's just something that you've come across, hopefully, in your life, you know. And, uh, and it's great. Oh, I think it's wonderful. But I, I, haven't, I haven't felt like that in like freaking forever because I've just been sucked into reality. You know, kids and family and work and, um, you know. Uh, making the illusion. Things, yeah, yeah, exactly. Is uh, it, it? You got to do it. You know, yeah. you got to do it. You do. You have so. to pay your taxes, and you have to get up every day and do your chores and take care of your family. <laughs> exactly. It's it's um it's like uh, Jordan Peterson's one of my favorite people to listen to because uh, anytime I'm feeling down, you know, he's always good for that whole like, hey, you got to pick up your pain, you got to pick up your suffering, you got to bear it, you got to go out and and even though, you know, you're your dog died, you need to go do the dishes and, you know, you yeah. need to go make some food and you need to possibly get some exercise in if that's possible today, you know, with your mood. Mm -hmm. But it's like, if you're not doing these things for yourself and you just fall into the illusion, you fall into your thought process of like, oh, the world's coming against me. Yeah. Uh, you get really lost and you, you just... That's why it's it like you're, you're in a dryer, yeah. dude. You're just tumbling around in a dryer and you don't know which way is up. And, you know, and you're in that whole, you know, that whole process, you know, so you got to having stepped out of there and having taken off your horse blinders and seeing, you know, the world for what it is and feeling, you know, everything flow through you, you know, you, you know, that that's out there, you know, yeah. so at least, at least we've, you know, had that experience. And I'm sure a lot of people uh, have had that experience as well, whether they acknowledge it or not, or it was just a weird time in their life or whatever. You know, like they, they know that they've had that feeling too, you know, and it's a great feeling to have. 
Yeah. You know, I'd love to be like that all the time, you know? Well, that's yeah. my goal in life at this point, man. Transcend, bro. Transcend, man. <laughs> like, uh, let it all go. And just, you know, I, I mean, I'm just trying to walk the path. I, uh, I'm not like going to be a Buddhist monk and wear the orange robes. Like, I'm not, that's not me, man. I'm not. That, yeah. I'm not uh, worthy of that even like like this is just a, this is a therapeutic thing right it's, well, it's you're right where you need to be bro yeah. you know like it, it, all the tests and everything that you're gonna have to go through in your life is is right where you're at anyway yeah. you know and it's gonna come to you regardless you know so you just you you are who you are you know yourself and you uh, you walk the path man you know and you you try your best to to maintain that the higher sense of consciousness and and uh you know it's not something you could tell other people how to do it's just something you know and uh and hopefully you know your uh you know your your thoughts and your energy and everything you know passes on to somebody else you know because we're all energy and we all give off energy and we all receive energy you oh know? yeah so, totally yeah so i mean you know if we want to be good positive high vibrating energy you know and and other people feel that they might not know what the fuck's going on or who the hell is this guy you know or even just that negative energy you know when someone walks into a room and you're just like oh they're they're not feeling good you know or, or wow like that person's like really got a high vibrating energy you know like you you feel their energies you might not know what the hell it is but you sense that you oh, yeah. know so that's what you do you you just you be who you are you walk your path in life, and hopefully, man, you know, you touch somebody with your soul, and it, and it helps change theirs, you know? That's all you really can do. Yeah. Like, I can't go and tell anybody this stuff, you know? Yeah. I Like, it, no one wants to hear it. No one oh, wants dude, to listen to me talk to you about... I don't think it's a boring conversation. <laughs> I just... I think it's a fascinating conversation. I uh, I love philosophy and, and, and religion and, and metaphysics. Uh, it's, it's all fascinating to me, uh, but most other people are not interested in that conversation whatsoever. Right. I mean, they they want to know what was going on in their Facebook stream. They want to know what Trump's doing. They want to know, you know, what's going on in the news. Yeah. Um, so it's like the distraction, the distractions, right. They're obsessed yeah. with the distractions, right. They're obsessed with the new video game that's coming out. You know, PlayStation five is coming out in Christmas, right? Like mm -hmm. the, the distractions in life, the, the illusion that's around you, that's designed to keep you distracted. Yeah. Your entire existence. Yeah. Um, it takes away your perception. It takes away your conscious being and just, you just start getting on autopilot and you're just fucking entertaining your brain. Just doing the motions. Let me just, yeah, going through let the me just go to the amusement park again and, and oh, this is great. And yeah. it's just like, it's so empty. It's so empty. But, but yeah, for the people that have had the, the spiritual experience, you know, you, you, you know, there's something else out there, Yeah. you know, so that's all you can do is just, you know what you know. You know, and you walk your path. And I know nothing. And it's right. <laughs> the more I know, the less I know. <laughs> That's exactly it. Um, the, the best example for me personally is like the audio engineering. I kept digging harder and harder and got degrees and certificates and just just dug into that world of like being an audio engineer. I was like, oh, this is my career. I'm going to be the best audio engineer in the world. I start designing systems. I start doing acoustic, uh, tr you know, like uh, treatments. And, and uh, I, I, I just got to this level of being an audio engineer where from the outside perspective, they're like, oh, you're an expert at audio. And I go, I would never say that about myself. Do you know how much shit I don't know? <laughs> There's just so much to learn in this one little tiny section, this little niche section of that we call audio engineering. I'll never learn it all. I'll never, ever even come close. Right. And I, I'll, I'll learn a lot. Yeah. But never will I be able to say I'm an expert in this subject and I know everything about it. You know, like just, I, nothing, nothing, you know, I, there's no, and even something simple, you know, you get into like, just like dirt, right? Say like dirt. There's so many different kinds of dirt, right? Like oh, yeah. that, uh, and then the what is actually making up the the dirt that you're that we're talking about, right? And then, so you can get into that and say, I'm going to become an expert on soil, and it's like, good luck. 
You know, that's going to take you into becoming a chemist. That's going to be, you know, yeah, you need to be a geologist. You need to be a botanist. Um, So it's like, yeah, this, the world is infinite, man. And um, that's another thing that I like from it, where they say the entire universe fits inside of a mustard seed. And it's like, it's this, um, it's this infinite, like everything is as big or as small as your consciousness wants it to be at the moment. It's kind of a weird thing to say. Um, but like the, yeah, the, the entire universe is just part of someone else's atomic structure. I, you know, I I believe that it's that looping infinite uh, infinity, right? I I believe that. I believe we're all a part of a, a, a larger being. And, and if the earth was a cell, you know, we're inhabiting it and we're making this cell. Uh, you know, either a good cell or, or a bad cell for whatever the, the, the larger being is, you know? So it's just like, I'm, my, my part is to just, you know, be a good person and hopefully spread kindness and love and peace and, and, uh, you know, forgiveness and, and, you know, and hopefully that catches on and, uh, you know, and it, it helps other people to be a, a better part of, uh, of the cell that we're on, you yeah. know? So it can, cause we're all just you know, floating around in space and who's to say that we're not part of some other, you know, magnificent being, you know, and then yeah. who's to say that our cells don't have... You are part of a magnificent being. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, who's to say our cells don't have, you know, a uh, little conscious people living on them, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's the it's the inf- infinite, the infinite, right? Yeah, um, the infinite. Once, once you start getting pa- into, uh, like, the atomic scale and you're trying to, like, like we... we we don't have an image of an electron, right? Like we, it's just too small. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so you start going in like to, to trying to study, uh, atoms and you realize that, oh, well, the, what are these made out of, right? Like neutrons and protons are made out of quarks. And, uh, well, what are the quarks made out of? Well, they're going to call those quarks, you know, uh, there's up quarks and down quarks. And then what are the up quarks and down quarks made out of? Oh, those are made out yeah, of you, possibly you're, strings. You're going down a rabbit hole. And then the strings, uh, there's, there's so many different kinds. I watched a, a whole thing, um, where these universities are figuring out how many different kinds of string possibilities there would be based on, you know, we have the 11 dimensions of reality that uh, we exist in three of. And, uh, and so the string theory kind of expands upon that to where it's like, oh, so everything that can possibly happen will happen in this space? Not this space, right? But the infinite, right? All the different dimensions and the higher levels of time and space and, um, and literally every possible scenario of every quantum interaction exists in that those 11 dimensions and uh and we're just living out one of infinite possible timelines Mm -hmm. and everything in this timeline is unique to itself for the most part right and it's like literally all of it um is just this beautiful once in a lifetime opportunity to experience things from the perception of your own eyes and uh on this specific timeline of infinite if, if, of infinity of the 11 dimensional space and uh it's it's such a, a blessing and a gift to exist in that it at is. first i was like oh like so the universe is like like you know what i mean and then, but then so this is just one universe of infinite universes inside of infinite timelines and so it's like the meaningless of it gets so I think it's just over like a the brain top, exercise, you know, right? <laughs> that um, that you can, well, you can look at it as as everything is meaningless, or you can look at it as I give everything meaning. Yeah, and I like that better. Yeah, I think that's what we are. I think perspective, man. I think our consciousness and our awareness of the things around us, and uh, uh, our just our general existence in this three dimensional space is us giving meaning to the universe because otherwise it'd be a bunch of rocks floating around in a fucking explosion that's taken 13 billion years yeah so in other words you're your own you know uh question to the answer you know or answer to the question yeah (laughs) oh you are god in its own sense right we all are not one of us all of us are at all you know and i felt godlike yeah plenty of times in my life you know where it's just like uh i felt the universe flowing through me and i was just like wow this is amazing and and uh just you know i, I floated you know on air 
Yeah. You know, it was a great feeling to have. It's like Carl Sagan would say, um, he goes, you are the universe looking back on itself. Mm -hmm. And you literally are that, right? You're a collection of uh, atomic structures that were created inside of a, of a star that, you know, exploded mm -hmm. and sent all these particles flying throughout the universe. And some of them ended up in this specific area of this specific galaxy and turned into our solar system. And then four billion years later, all of a sudden, you know, all these humans are popping up on this rock. And, you know, we all just came out of a star. And somehow... Uh, you know, the uh, carbon-based life forms started moving around and developing and getting better and better and better and better and better until this thinking machine inside of them said, oh, oh, look at, I'm, I'm here I'm right here. now. Yeah, I'm I, I here. consciousness, yeah. Yeah, and, um, and we started asking those questions that ants don't ask, right? The, the ant doesn't ask, why am I here? Yeah, it just ant doesn't I, I get gotta depressed. get this leave, leave to the hive or to the house. You know? Yeah, and he's not worried about what his fellow ant homie got. You know, like there's no oh well, he's got a he's got a bigger leaf than I do. Yeah. you know, in the ant community, it's just like no, I'm an ant and I go get things, and you're no different than that. It's like understanding that you're no different that than that is super important to moving forward. And it's like this thinking computer inside your head isn't you. Right. It's uh, any more than your cell phone is you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a device that you can use to acquire knowledge and organize that knowledge and you store memories. And then this succession of memories has happened that you have stored up in your brain. You call your life and it's it's just a series of things that have occurred. And um, you're just you're just remembering them. Right. Like you only have now the past isn't real. Yeah. The future is not real. It well, never will be. Now. Yeah, you're always just right here. Yeah. But we we create the past and the future in our minds. You know, we create everything in our minds. Like our whole perception is, um, it's this big game of flavor in the world, and uh, that's why I like to. You know, that's it's. It's a total trip, man. It's a total trip when you start diving into it pretty hard. Because I dive in, I mean, like, yes, I have been reading, you know, the religious scriptures, but for the last, you know, 35 years, I've been reading physics and, <laughs> yeah. you know, I read Michu Kaku and Ray Kurzweil and shit like that, you know, and, um, and so it's very interesting to have both sides of that story and both sides of that story tell you the same story. Yeah. You know, even uh, modern quantum physics is talking about how, uh, every cell in our body is more like a radio transmitter. And like we, we function as these, uh, these, these beacons where, where, where signals coming to us. Yeah. You know, we're not, I, I believe that, you know, very much, you know, that we're just energy and, yeah. you know, we, uh, we project it and we take it in and, you know, everything's energy, right? Like that's, uh, Einstein, right? Uh, yeah. it's, uh, energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. Mm -hmm. So it's just uh, uh, energy just gets converted into mass, and then but it's you know technically I mean they're the same they're two sides of the same coin, right? So yeah, I don't know. It gets it gets interesting when you start diving into it further and further because you I'll just start, watch Rick and Morty, dude. That's, you start that's realizing where I get all that my shit. there's just this <laughs> that there, we're literally living in one of of every possibility. Uh, every possible universe yeah. that does exist in multiple dimensions of realities as like the uh what is it called the the mandela effect yeah right and it's just like there's this crossing of realities is happening i feel like like i feel like it might it, and i don't know if it's happening on a personal level on uh, a global level i guess it's a global level because the whole globe realizes these mandala effects uh occurring but it's like I, it's like these slight shifts into other possible dimensions that just they're just happening. You know, it's like time and space is this fluctuating thing. I, I just think we're just becoming more aware of it as a society. Yeah. Thank God. Hopefully, man. You know, it'd be great for us all to to feel this way and and realize that we all affect each other and you know and want to be you know good people. You know. Well, that's what well, that's what it's for, you know. It's like before um, before we had all these uh, religious doctrines and scriptures, right? It was just chaos. It was just people killing each other and 
you know, just the I'm bigger than you, therefore I take what I want, mm-hmm. you know, and that's just how existence is going to go about for a long time until all these moral books came around and they're like, how about we stop raping our sisters? You know, let's stop that one. Let's stop killing people for no reason. Let's, I think everything you know, kind of like, comes out for, for like a, a moral, you know, the, to try and do good, but then it, it gets, it gets manipulated by yeah. power hungry people, you know, um, you know, religion is a form of control just as is government and, yeah. you know, uh, well, that's what I feel about the Western religions, right? They all, they are all more of a form of control mm-hmm. as opposed and see, they're offering the same advice for the most part, right? Not in the same way. It's this, you the, gotta the, pay for the, it. The, well, the Eastern religions go, I don't care if you do this, mm-hmm. you're going to just come to me eventually, right? Like, cause they just go. Do it or don't do it. You can suffer all you want. If you want to stop suffering, I can help you with that. But I don't care. And I love that about the Eastern religions. But the Western religions are like, no, you have to follow this doctrine, right? And I'm like, this or is, you're going to hell. Yeah, or you're going to hell. There's gonna be there's gonna be consequences, right? Mm-hmm. And this is the only chance you get, right? So there's all these things that build up to where you go, oh, I've been scammed before. I know these I know these pressure points that you're trying to push me on to get on your your train. But, uh, but at the same time, they're offering, they're, they're trying to turn you into the same person that the Buddhists are trying to turn you into, the Taoists are trying to turn you into, right? Yeah, but they're, they're going fear-based. But they're going fear-based, right? But they yeah. still want you to, they, they want you to behave the same way, right? They want you to, they want you to act like that, but they don't got time to, to actually fix you, <laughs> right? So they're just going to scare you into behaving like a Buddhist. They're going to scare you into behaving like a good person. And, um, and when, it's, when it comes down to it, right, and you're, you're someone who's responsible for tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people in these civilizations as time is coming up, right? It's like you need this desperately. You need this. You, your people are going to be so out of control, you know, and just so wild and rambunctious, and without these, uh, without this level of morality and this level of like, hey, this isn't how we act, right? Like, you need some, you need to tell people how to act. They, yeah. You're not born with. I mean, you are born with certain genetic uh, knowledge, right? Like your your DNA comes with all this memory to it, right? Like we just know certain things and how to behave certain ways, but these are instinctual things that we've learned over time. Um, they aren't morals, right? They aren't moral principles. It's like whenever you take, um, like a baby bird that just hatched and you take a big, uh, cardboard cutout and you fly it over the top of, uh, the light and they see the shadow of a big bird coming their way. Mm -hmm. They freak out and they hide, you know, like they were just born. They were just born. They've never seen another bird. So they didn't learn this. It's, it's, it's in their genetic code to these behavioral patterns, right? So we get those things going on. And a lot of them suck too, right? Like we get these bad genetic behavioral patterns that we are just forced with, like say alcoholism. I got that one, right? So if I touch alcohol, I'm going to drink that shit until I fucking ruin my life. And, uh, and that's just in me, right? It's not, it's not a thought process. It's a, it's a chemical response that happens, man. Yeah, like I can absolutely. feel my pupils dilate. Like I've, I've, I went on and off the wagon for a long time in my twenties. And I, and I remember several times falling off the wagon and hitting a shot of whiskey that I haven't tasted in six months. And I feel my pupils dilate my whole body responds like, yes. <laughs> and it's like other people don't have, the, I don't think people have the same response to this as yeah, I do. You watch somebody stir a fucking, you know, strawberry daiquiri till the ice melts. And yeah. you're just like, Drink the fucking thing. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, I take a sip and I'm like, give me the bottle. Yeah, right. Take that cap. Don't need that. See you guys you next know. month. Yeah, that's <laughs> and exactly. And it's just, it's I me mean, genetically, right? Yeah. So, um, so there are these, these principles that we kind of are born with, but at the same time, we need a sense of morality. Like it's, it's very important. And I think it's one of the reasons our society is falling apart so hard, right? Because, like uh, moral structure and like uh, spirituality, uh, religious belief, it's very frowned upon. It's very frowned upon in our culture. Like, 
Well, I think people's egos are out of control. I agree and, with and that. I think, I think that that has mainly to do with, you know, social media and people feeling like their opinions are important, important enough for other people to hear and important enough for if other people don't think the way that you do that you need to uh, get those people out of your life. You know, uh, I was just talking to a friend and he goes, one way to become an intelligent person is not to surround yourself with like-minded people, but to surround yourself with people that think differently than you yeah. and, uh, and, and might have different, you know, belief systems than you do and, and try and learn from that, you know, to grow. Because, I mean, you, you, get the, you get people that think the same way you do, you're going to have a room full of idiots. That's it. You know? That's it. And it doesn't matter if they were the smartest people before. It's like if there's no debate going on, if there's no back and forth there's and no like growth, conflicting yeah. ideas, it's just like well, we all accept this. This yeah. We accept this belief structure, right? This is what I was talking about uh, before we turned the cameras on, right? Beliefs and isms, mm. right? Those, those, are the, those are the worst two things you could get into, man. Whenever you, put a, you take an idea, an idea is a great thing. An mm. idea is fantastic. And an idea can fluctuate. Right. You can yeah. move back and forth yeah, with an idea. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, oh, man, like, you know, I can I'm totally willing to have an, a discussion with somebody about things because I have ideas. But when you, you know, believe in when you have a belief. Yeah. Now you're just now you just want to defend your belief. Yeah. Right. And now we're not having a conversation. Right. You're ignoring what I'm saying. And then you defend your belief. Yeah. And that's that's the that's the back and forth and that we're going to have. And then you don't hear what the other person has to say. You 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 know, you don't you don't want to. I, I think it's like just the most horrible fucking thing I've, I've seen in a long time. You know, friends not talking to each other, family members, you know, uh, uh, blocking one another, you know, just, yeah. just, uh, just off of different belief systems. You know, it's just like whatever happened to fucking mind your own business, you know, uh, believe what you believe, you know, and, and not everybody has to believe the same way you do, yeah. you know, and, and, and dude, just shut the fuck up. Your opinion doesn't matter. Literally. Know? Yeah. And just, you know, and live your life the way you see fit. You do, you know, there's two types of people. Do you do your own research? Do you find things out for yourself? Or do you listen to what other people say and, you know, inform your thesis based off of, you know, information, you know, that you get from other people that may be true or maybe not? Who the fuck knows? But however you decipher how you're going to make choices and what your belief systems are, keep it to your fucking self. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Don't make belief systems. Yeah. Just, just you know. Just Have ideas. Live your life and, and let people, I, I guess the, the basis to what I was trying to say is, is let people be who they are. Yeah. Truly, you know, like, and, and that's how you're going to get to, you know, forgive and whatever. If people don't f feel the same way you do, that's fine, dude. I, it's not about that. You know, it's just about, you know, us it's being humans together. Unless you, unless you're into some fucking weird ass shit and, yeah. you know, you're, you're like, you're, you're completely just wrong as a person. But, you know, if you want to vote for Trump, fucking vote for Trump, man. If you want to mm -hmm. vote for fucking Biden, vote for Biden. Yeah. Tired of seeing that fucking divide kill us, you know, um, because of, you know, what people believe and what yeah. people believe in the media, you know, that <laughs> it's all lies anyways, playing man. You like fucking Puppet, that's you know? what they're doing. So, they, that's uh, what they want. If you, yeah. if you haven't noticed, it's like they want us divided. Like the mm -hmm. the country's never been more solid 50-50. Are, are you a red X or a fucking blue square? Uh, <laughs> in this election, I'm a red X, baby, and I don't give a fuck. Like yeah. I, uh, but I, I stay central. I, I'm centrist very much. I just, the, the, the I don't want to vote for the blue side of hate. You know, there's just a party of hate, and they just hate everything and hate, 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 hate. And I just go, okay, well, I'm not going to vote for hate. Yeah. So I'll vote for the economy. Yeah, and well, I mean, it's it's just say, man, what, what's your belief system? You know, what yeah. what do you believe in? They don't. They don't. They just they fucking they're 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 just trying to hate on somebody and spent this whole three years, you know, just just trying to destroy somebody, and all he's done is fucking just, you know. He's tweeted about it every fucking second Which is away. great. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't give a shit, man. Yeah. He just kept his fucking head down and, and just fucking, you know, just kept working. Yeah. You know? I've so. been, I, I usually vote blue, 
because it's, the, so it's more I, rational. The Democrats be fucking up lately, dude. Yeah, That's they the, don't have a plan. They don't. They don't care. Yeah, their they plan just is they, to get hate Trump, Trump. Out of, to get Trump out of office. Yeah, yeah. and that's not a plan. It's fucking not a Trump's, plan. Trump's putting in work, dude, and he's fucking. Yeah. He's making changes. I never heard of a president, you know, since Reagan, fucking put in as much work as he's done. Yeah, but it doesn't matter, you know, because it's orange man bad, and. And there, it's always going to just be orange man bad. Uh, I, and I don't believe that. I think that's a very flock it's, mentality. It's very flock mentality, yeah, and, and I won't uh, be a part of it. Yeah. So I mean, but even even you know, just saying that, you know, like I, I feel like oh oh god, I can't I believe Donnie thinks sure. that. Uh, oh, Jason thinks that. Oh, fuck these guys. They don't think uh, the same way I do. I don't have to. I don't. Yeah. I don't, don't have to I think the same way you do. I don't have to. You know, it's 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 just what I believe. It's it's my freedom to think what the hell I want to do, to research how I want to research, and to vote the way way I want to vote for. If you think opposite of that way. I still love you, man. You know, yeah. I'll still be your friend. I'll still break bread with you. Yeah. You know, like I'm not going to, I'm not going to block you, you know, unless you're just being a total fucking dick and just argumentative and, you know, just don't want to fucking hear anything. Then I'll just be like, block. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even, I don't even go on the social media anymore because oh, it's, dude, it's, it's a fucking, especially it's a, right now, it's, it's going to become a clusterfuck. It's a fucking witch hunt, dude. Oh, yeah. That's all it is, man. It's just, you know. So whatever, I let the cat out of the bag. I'm voting for Trump. Fuck yeah, all y'all. You and you and so many other people, dude. Like <laughs> so many other people. They come over and they won't fucking say it, but so many like they won't say oh, it dude, on air. We, but then afterwards, you know, we're hanging out and they're like, Trump Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. We we gotta we gotta keep this train rolling because we can't let those crazy bastards in there with all this hate politics. Yeah. And it's like they're just gonna try to make the country a communist. What? 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 Whatever, whatever that fucking shit is. <laughs> what I like is the fact that you know the dude just you know takes heat and grenades on a regular fucking basis, keeps oh, he's his a head beast. down, and still just fucking gets the job done, dude. Like you know, he's just like he's determined, he is focused, you know, and uh, and he's got that 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 wolf mentality, man. He just gets it fucking done. Um, what am I trying to say? Is uh, I can't think of the word right now, but yeah. whatever, I'll come back to it later. Maybe it'll come back to me. Well, I just like that he's the guy that he's his his key f phrase, right? Like his signature phrase is like "You're fired," and I was like, "That's the guy we need. In, that's the guy we need in the chair right now, right?" Yeah. I just oh, need he, the guy. I just need someone that's going to go he, fire everybody. He doesn't. He didn't grow up in politics, you know. Yeah, he's like, not a politician. Dude, yeah, he he didn't do any handshakes. Didn't make no fucking deals. Doesn't know anyone any fucking favors. Yeah, he's just there to get the job done. Okay, this is wrong okay what do we got on our uh, agenda today this that 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 and this boom it gets done dude and that's who we ha should have run in our country by the way is an actual person not not a political puppet, right? Not yeah. some kid that owes, who was, owes a million favors. Yeah, you it, know that 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 has these special interest groups that he's got to you know protect and look out for because you know they helped him on his way up or her on their way up. You know, like it's just it's it's somebody that that doesn't have these social political ties. Yeah, yeah, know? and he's just there to do a job, man. And uh, and yeah, me. Everybody's gonna do a shit job of that job. That's like the hardest job in the world. It's the, you're the leader of the free world, right? So nobody <laughs> there's can, there's no experience for yeah. that. You nobody know, like, does uh, that what, job right. What, ex what experience do you have as uh, being a president? Uh, 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 don't. <laughs> I was the governor of a state for four years. It's like, oh, really? How did that fucking go, right? And it's like, well, you know, it's really hard to govern a state, and it kind of was a shit show. But I mean, what else you got? You got no other options, right? It's like you can't put you can't put a million negative political campaigns ads against me because my dad made sure I didn't make any mistakes growing up. And it's like, well, I don't want you in charge of shit. You don't even know what the real world's about. Oh yeah, dude. You're like, oh my god, these people are are godlike and and don't make mistakes and, and they're yeah. not real people. It's bullshit. Dude, people are fucking people, man. Yeah. People cheat on their taxes. Well, I don't know if they do. but They, they definitely they, do. <laughs> they, 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 they have they, an IRS they have if infidelities. everybody was They have infidelities. They lie. They smoke pot. They probably dig coke. You know, whatever the fuck. You know, people are fucking people and to put them on this pedestal like they're they're godlike or whatever is just, you know, it's just a success for failure. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, it's just, you know, it, whatever. You know, everybody has their flaws. Everybody's battling their own ego most of the time. Oh, yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, and, and, and whatever, man. But what, what we, what we got to do is we got to make the right decision for ourselves. And if that is, you know, what Biden's doing, then vote, vote for him. That's fine. I love you. Yeah. Whatever. You know, but, uh, you know, 
any whole, any blue will do, right? <laughs> any yeah, that's that's, that's a great. The, that's the attitude. But what I'm saying is, man, is it's it's not a no, nobody should fucking you know unfriend or, or you know like want to no know, ouch want you out of their life for your fucking political or li- religious belief. You know, it's just. You know, who are you, man? Why why you got to do that? Why you got to be that way? Yeah. You know, I've literally ran into people who uh, I was I was on a gig and one of the clients came up and was like just talking mad shit about Trump. And I was like, you know, that's kind of inappropriate for work. And then she goes, you know, it's inappropriate. It's my piece of shit ex-husband. And I go, ex-husband. She goes, yeah, he voted for Trump. So I divorced him. And it's just like, bro. That's terrible. I'm, I'm you broke your family sh- up pretty, over that? I'm pretty sure there was underlying issues yeah. just, just from the way you described that person. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there was other shit going on. You know, she was a crazy person. <laughs> she wouldn't shut the fuck up. And, and I was just like, I kept trying to go like, you know, they were at work and I really don't care about your Trump hatery. You know, like it's it's sad is what it is at this point. It's just sad to listen to someone just bash on the guy. And it's like, OK, we're, we're, you watch CNN this morning. I get it. Get it Regurgitate yeah. what they told you to say to me. Great. Thanks, CNN. You know, I'm glad you brainwashed people. I don't watch any of them. But I don't watch, watch any of them. Yeah, watch them both, you know, just so you could see what, you know, like, and then you could form a better opinion, you know, if you yeah. get both sides of the, the, the coin there. Well, they're both propaganda. It's yeah. just, it's what it is, is it's the best soap opera, best soap opera they ever came up with to distract the American public. Oh, dude, I bet you the fucking percentage uh, for voters going out to vote this election is yeah. probably just going to fucking trump every election there's been since, like, you know, fucking forever. Who knows? You know, like, I, I bet I, record numbers. Mm-hmm. I, I bet you record-breaking numbers out for this election just based on the, you know, all the fucking publicity that all this shit has. You know, yeah. like, I've never seen it, like, so there everybody's in a fucking fever pitch over this shit. Well, yeah, now it's the hot shit. To t- it's the, it's the, this is what's in right now, you yeah. know? Oh my it's God, not, politics uh, is in. What, what, it's not the survivor fucking finale. It's, it's, it's the Trump election, you know? It's yeah. like, that's what's important to people. And uh, it's just entertainment. It's, it's entertainment politics, man. And people get wrapped up in it. They identify themselves with their political party, which is absurd to do. Like, yeah, don't do that. Yeah, exactly. It's not okay it's to gonna, do. It's going to let you down. You're trust not, me. You're not one or the other. Well, those are those are people that, you know, like uh, that I think that don't have a full self, you know? Like, yeah, and they don't. And, and they're just, you know, tumbling around. They're you know? reaching for things, right? Like, I was watching... Like, uh, who am I? I was watching... Uh, Saad Guru, he's one of my f- uh, favorite uh, lecturers on YouTube. Uh, it's S A D H Guru, Saad Guru. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he goes to colleges and he talks to kids at these colleges, and watching them uh, just—they're so hardcore, identified with their liberalism and their liberal beliefs, and they—they want—they want the whole country to be a communist state, and like they're just so brainwashed by their teachers and their professors who never had a real job they'd never been outside of a of a, of a uh, learning facility right they just like they they went to school their whole lives got a job as a professor got tenureship and then brainwashed all these kids with total delusions of how the world works mm-hmm. and uh and these kids they come at him thinking oh this is a guru this is a peace love kind of cat he's going to be on my side and you watch their whole infrastructure infrastructure collapse. melts, yeah, because <laughs> they're so identified. They're just they're just so desperate. And I, I did the same thing when I was in my twenties, right? Like I was like, uh, you're, you're I, I'm, I'm a metal stilts, guy, dude. and yeah. I, I'm an audio engineer, and I'm a bass player, and you know what I mean? Like these all these ideas. I, I was an atheist, right? Like it was all these identifications that make up the image in my head of who I am, which is all a lie I'm telling myself, right? It's like you're attaching yourself to these ideologies trying to figure out who the fuck you are because nobody knows who they are, right? And it takes takes more than that to find out. It takes a lot of experience. You can't just attach yourself to something and then say this is me because it's not. It's not you, okay? Exactly. Uh, Thank God you know that. Yeah. A lot of people go through life and, and realize that on their deathbed. Yeah. You know? and, well, that's the game, right? It's like, it, that's why, that's why the Buddhists call this an illusion mm-hmm. because it is, it's like, 
it's like you've been you've been marathoning uh, some show on Netflix for a several days straight, and now you you think you're you, you know one of the characters in the show you're watching, and it's just not true. Yeah, because you identify with that person particularly. Yeah, and it's like just because your perception of reality comes out of this place doesn't mean that this is all you are, and it doesn't mean that you're separate from the world around you. You know, you you're part of this world. It's not a thing that you stand on. It's yeah. you. You came out of it, and you're going to go back into it. You're just like a flower, kind of blop. Yeah, and that's it. Well, I, I think that, like you know, when you attach yourself to those ideal ideologies and everything, it's just like standing on stilts, you know. And you feel high for a little bit, but it's real fucking easy to knock you down. And when you hit, you hit hard. You yeah. Know? But uh, but you know, hopefully, um, you know, because that's happened to me a million times. You know, where I was just like, dude, I'm a drummer. You know, I'm a, I'm in a great band, you know, and this is before I got to Vegas, but you know, just, just that inflated ego, you know, and, um, and, uh, dude, when it gets knocked out from underneath you and you hit hard, man, you're just like, well, fuck who, who the hell am I? You know, what am I doing? You know, like I, I don't know anything, you know, and, and hopefully that's, you take that time as, as a regrowth, you know, to, to, to strip things down and to fill yourself you know, with, with yourself, you know, through, uh, soul searching, you know, and, uh, you learn to stand up on your own two feet, you know, and you learn that, you know, you don't need to stand, you know, on stilts or someone's shoulders to, to be tall. You could be a powerful person just by knowing yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. Once you know yourself, you, nobody can touch you. Exactly. That's it. You're, you're, you've, you've figured that part of yourself out. So it's like when someone tries to push their uh, idea of the object that you are onto you, you just go, that's okay. Yeah. I, and I don't I need don't. that. And, uh, and I've been dealing with that a lot because like I've been trapped in my house, right? Reading all this religion and philosophy and shit like that. So then every time I meet someone or like, you know, like a family member even, you know, or like if one of my best friends, it's like I have changed so much. And so they're used to the idea of who I was a month and a half ago last time I was in their presence. Mm -hmm. And it's like in that month and a half, I've learned all these new things and taken on these new behavior patterns, maybe dropped off, you know, like stop, stop doing, I'm stopping everything, right? Like I'm, I'm at the point where I, I do water, tea, oatmeal, rice, and vegetables. That's what I put in my body. Mm -hmm. I don't put anything else in my fucking body. Right. Unless it's, oh, well, I do the workout supplements, right? Mm -hmm. When I exercise, I do my amino acids and I'll have a protein shake with my oh, oatmeal. I've been a fucking nut about that stuff, though. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so, like, but yeah, but that becomes this thing. So then you go to a, a party, right? And they're like trying to get you to eat a burger and you're just like, uh, I mean, I all like, you know, I'll fuck well, around, dude, but it's like, I'm not into that stuff. There and everything, yeah. man. It's good stuff, man. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of good, a lot of good animals out here to eat, you know? Oh, yeah. I'm a total fucking carnivore. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh but my my point being is like they have this object of who you are in their head right this this yeah. concept right but we have to do that right we have to catalog everybody and their characteristics in our subconscious and and go like okay so this person acts this way and wears these kinds of clothes and listens to this kind of music and he's this is this person right i have a handle on it yeah and when you start doing what I've been doing, which is like trying to just erase that, right? Like I just, I realized. It's just an outer shell. Yeah, I realized this is all just these these things. Like I'm, an, I'm a metalhead and I'm a bass player and I'm an atheist, right? These descriptors, mm -hmm. these, are, these are illusions that I'm creating to define myself with. And I have to remove them from my, my reality, man. It's not, it's not okay to just hang on to those things anymore, right? It helped me get here. It helped mm -hmm. me figure out things and... Uh, but it's like um, once you've crossed the river, you don't go dragging the canoe through the woods. You leave the canoe at the river. Mm -hmm. and you Move you know, continue your journey freed from that uh, that last expedition of getting across the river, but which it, is difficult. You, you don't negate the journey, man. The journey yeah. is, is how you got there. You know, and, uh, no matter what it took for you to, to realize you know, and get you to that point, uh, that's, that's a blessing. You, know? so yeah. you got there. Yeah, thankfully. Yeah, thank I, God, I stumbled. I stumbled in, and you're never really <laughs> totally there. disheveled. You know, it's, it, like I said, it's 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 a it's an ongoing process, you know, and it takes a lot of discipline and, and time. Yeah, lots of time to to maintain that 
mentality and that way of thinking because the world is geared to get you back in, man. You know? well, yeah, they so, want to sell you stuff. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, they yeah, want and we need to buy stuff. Yeah, well, we don't. <laughs> we, I mean, we do and we don't, right? Yeah. Like, we need to keep the economy proper, but you don't need to spend 500 bucks on gizmos and, and, and dingbats from fucking Amazon, I, right? I, I like, like, every I like month. Ma I like Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs. That's, yeah. like, just... It, it sums up, you know, the human condition so much. Find shelter, uh, find company, uh, become the head of that company, uh, ascend. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so but most people can't get past the uh, fine company and become the head or you know become the alpha or the uh, the leader of the group yeah. you know so it's like yeah we got shelter you know we got food all right all that's taken care of you know i need to find people and i need to be their boss yeah, you know, <laughs> none, none of us, most of us, don't get to the ascension level of, you know, of just being self fulfilled and uh, and and hopefully helping others, you know, reach that point in their journey as well. Just yeah. by just by being who you are, not by preaching or starting a group or starting ideologies, just by believing what you believe in, you know, and, and maintaining your integrity, and hopefully other people will see that and, you know, and uh, grow. Yeah, they either want to, they, they either see the ref, you reflecting on them as a, uh, a an attack on their persona, or they go, oh, I could, I could be a little better, couldn't I? Right, and it's like how they take that it, it determines on how they're going to act around you. But um, and a lot of people just take to the defensive, right? They go. That's why I usually don't talk about this shit in yeah. front of people because it, when when they feel like you're like that, they they look at you differently. Yeah, yeah, they do, and they and they their defenses go up, you know. So it's just like it. It's it. it <laughs> you got it, but you don't talk about it. You know, it's it's a secret, and I'm not gonna tell. Yeah, you know. So. Yeah, I stopped. I stopped. Uh, I stopped letting people know what was going on. Like I was keeping up with my brother as I was going dude, through. You'll be fucking crazy. They'll look at you like you're fucking crazy, dude. Yeah, that's what started <laughs> happening. I, I started explaining all these uh, different methods I was going through and these different practices, and they're just like, they're like "Why yeah, would whatever, you do that?" Whatever, dude. Yeah, I'm living my own fucking life. Great yeah. for you. Good job. Yeah, they don't Keep, go care. do that over there. <laughs> but it's like sometimes people want to come and sit down and actually have the conversation, and I appreciate that a lot because I'm into that kind of conversation. I, I love, love it. I, 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 I live I love this it too, man. You know, it's 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 few and far between that I get to have these conversations. Yeah, you know, because uh, it just do you have the time? Yeah, and nobody yeah. and nobody's interested in it. Like, I mean, they are interested in it. They're definitely interested in it. They just. Once the, once it starts, they realize, oh, I'm not quite here, right? Like, because you have to, you have to die. You have to, ha you have to experience ego death and then be born again before you can accept you get, you God gotta pop, you gotta properly into your heart, right? You yeah. Pop the bubble. You have to, you have to, yeah, you have to burst that bubble and you have to realize that this character that I've been creating, that I'm playing uh, my whole life, it's not me it was never really there it's never real yeah. it was um an illusion it was a it was this it was these blinders i had on and i was like i'm jason froberg you know and, yeah. and it's just like no you're playing jason froberg you're currently on an 80 year cycle of of participating in this game as jason froberg and yeah. um since i started doing this i always like to say oh i just play that guy on tv yeah <laughs> That's not who I am, right? Because who I am is, um, at this point, undefinable because I'm constantly trying to evolve. And I'm constantly trying to take away negatives and add, you know, like I have these, they have these bad habits that I do and I can have these good habits that I can start learning. And, um, you know, it's just a daily process of like analyzing, self-analyzing and, and being present in the moment throughout the entire day, which is really hard, you know, to be that mindful. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, I'm not saying I'm, I can do that, right? Like, I, I, I'm present for a lot of the day, though. I yeah. just started learning this stuff, right? So it takes time. Like, there's, I always like to say there's a difference between knowing the path and walking the path. And it's like I can know the Eightfold Path, but if I sit here and swear like a sailor, it's not doing me any good, right? Because I'm not following right speech. And, uh, and so, yes, I do know that I shouldn't 
say swear words. I'm aware of it, right? But if I'm walking around swearing all the time, I'm not walking the path. I'm not gaining the benefits of the knowledge that I have. Life's a pendulum, man. You know, and you could you could stay right in the middle or you could hold it out here, but as soon as you let it go, it's going to go all the way over there. Yep. And sometimes that's that's what you need, you know, to find your center is to know what your limitations are. You need to go all the way over here so you can figure out what all the way over here is and then you, you live somewhere in the middle, somewhere where you, you compromise and say, you know, this is where I want to be. But you know you could go over here, but you know when you go over there, you're going to go right back over there. It's a fucking pendulum, man. Oh, it's you know, exactly if I, if I could. Describe life in one word, pendulous. <laughs> hey, uh, to uh, pendulous. Uh, I don't know how much time we got, man, but we uh, got another. We got forty-five if you want, or we can wrap it up now if you want. It doesn't matter. Oh, I, I was gonna say, man, just to just to play us out, um, put on uh, a little music for me. I want to hear uh, the grassroots uh, live for today, man. That's that's like. I, I listen to the oldies a lot. Yeah. Like well, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get tagged by YouTube. I don't know the rights to the song. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, you can't do that. All right, it goes like this: Sha na 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 na, live for today. Uh, that's <laughs> yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's a good one. Well, look it up. You know, you out there listening and whatnot, if you wanna, you know, get some good music, some good oldies. Yeah, that's the problem with doing this thing on YouTube is that um, even like when I have some of the bands on uh, and they'll be sitting right there saying, hey, pull up my music video and then YouTube will contact me and be like, hey, you can't use their music video. That's but the, they're right that's fucking there. I just got the permission. Do you, do you, you have permission to use this, <laughs> right? Because it's a robot. I give them permission. <laughs> yeah, and like I have to send I have to send letters from the b musicians out and say I have permission to use this music and if you watch the video, it's their band on my podcast telling me to play their video so like i have i have vocal permission i have written permission yeah like uh and and youtube's such a dick about it they're just like now nah, we're going to demonetize that whole video you made and i'm just like fuck okay okay i gotta be more careful about this is there any other mediums you could go through to to that are a little less uh, rigid um there are, but YouTube is the one that pays out, right? So YouTube is the, the reason I started it on the YouTube with the podcast. Like specifically, I was just like, I want to make money with this mm -hmm. to, you know, like I, I love doing it. Don't get me wrong. But it's also like I'm trying to make this a career. I, you know, like I can transition from this after a couple of years of doing it mm -hmm. into, you know, making actual money. And YouTube will give you advertising dollars once you hit a thousand uh, subscribers, 4,000 watch hours. Uh, you'll get your um, you'll get advertising locked into your videos, and then you get a percentage of that. Um, but then on top of it, if you have a podcast where it's just like I'm podcasting, mm -hmm. uh, there's tons of advertising companies that you can go directly to and say, "Hey, I have a podcast, and I have let's this say 1,500 yeah. subscribers." Um, and they'll uh, and they'll be like, "Oh, well, if you have uh, there's several right like there's like a just a generic where you can just go pick from a list that are like if you have 1,500 subscribers, anyone from this list will pay you 500 bucks a month to advertise or 500 bucks a podcast or whatever you know to advertise on your um, on your show. And so you just mention them or like pop a little thing up and you know and just like boom, making money directly from the advertisers, making money directly from YouTube." And, uh, that's a great way to make money. It sounds like, you know, yeah. So that's why I started the podcast, right. And got the podcast fucking rolling because it's like, um, it, it, there's multiple levels where I can monetize this thing and actually get paid to do it. Um, which would be just phenomenal, just phenomenal. If I could hang out with my friends and, and chat. podcast and chat and, and, and make money doing it. I mean, yeah, absolutely. And like, <laughs> And really, this podcast, I, I want to do it to uh, the point where I'm, like, inviting people in with their businesses. And, like, I'm trying to promote people, right? Like, cause that's why I wanted to have you on because I know that you're, uh, you've been running Vamped and Vamped's going to be opening next week, right? Uh, yeah, the 25th, we're opening up. Uh, it counts Vamped uh, 6750 uh, West Sahara, just south of, you know, uh, Rainbow. Or right. no, wait, hold on. Just the east of Rainbow. My bad. Just east of Rainbow. East of Rainbow, yeah. Right by the Hash House of Go-Go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You guys doing anything uh, You guys doing anything special for the reopening? Do you guys have live entertainment at all? or? Uh, you know, that's something we're looking in, uh, into a little bit. We might do some acoustic things. Right now we're just trying to open, uh, get the restaurant up and running, uh, focus on um, 
you know, hospitality, uh, quality, you know, uh, maintain, you know, the parameters that we need to maintain to, you know, run our business. Uh, uh, the good news is, is uh, my chili dog business, um, Youngstown Chili Dog, uh, is actually going to be on the menu there. So, oh, you nice. know, for people that uh, love my chili dogs, um, you know, the, the few people I've done, you know, I don't have like a store or anything, but I did like little pop-up events and, you know, I set up outside of a weed store. That was fun for a while until my fucking canopy blew all over the fucking place. And you know, <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it was, it was a big pain in the butt, but anyway, um, this is just such a blessing and, uh, you know, it totally uh, floored me and took me by surprise. And, uh, you know, I'm very, um, uh, very, uh, humbled and, uh, just feel very, uh, immense amount of gratitude, you know, to Corey and Danny for allowing me to, uh, you know, bring, you know, uh, my business in, into their house, you know, and I love that place and I love uh, working there. It's like, it, it feels like home, even without the live music, you know, that uh, attracted us all there, you know, like, you know, that vamped is the place for rock, you know, but now we're going to be, you know, uh, try to, to get known for our food because we have amazing burgers, you know, big, thick, juicy burgers. We have, uh, you know, amazing, uh, chicken tenders you know we soak them in buttermilk so they're super tender you know and then we fry them up so they're absolutely just delicious you know uh pizzas great pizzas you know and now we got my chili dogs there so boom you know uh so boom. come on in get yourself a yo dog and have a hamburger get some french fries and put some chili and some peeber beer cheese on that shit and there my commercial is over ah, there you go <laughs> see it's important it's yeah. important to help like promote each other. You so, know, we help, that's all we have is each other. And so it's, it's, yeah, we, we lift each other up, man. You that's know? it. Lift each other up is exactly the, the phrase I, that I like to use. So. Um, that's, that's what it's all about, man. You know, anybody that's uh, out there doing it, out there getting their hustle on and trying to, trying to exist in this world and be like a creative individual and, and they oh, need dude, marketing. Yeah, they need I marketing. Can't, I can't work a regular fucking job. I got to be out there. I got to be around people. You know, I got to be doing what I love. You know, um, that's that's what makes me me. Um, you know, I can't. Can I go work at a factory? Yeah, man. I, I did a summer at GM, you know, just slapping bolts on shit. Uh, you know, did I get paid good? Yeah. Was I, was it fucking boring? Yeah. It was real fucking boring. I also did land survey to help get me out here to Las Vegas. I was working as a waiter and I did land survey, go standing in swamp water trying to get a shot on a property line, getting <laughs> eaten by fucking mosquitoes, and you have to stand perfectly fucking still getting paid six bucks an hour to do that shit. Oh gross. Know? Oh dude, it was it was uh it was it was broadening to yeah. say the least. You know what I mean? Like um character building you know, is a good way to describe it. And I, I've done so much other shit too, you know, like, you know, just whatever to like, you know, just get through life, you know, odd jobs, this and that, blah, blah, blah. But I find I'm most happiest, you know, dealing uh, with people, you know, being around music, you know, and, um, and getting to be a, of service to, you know, to my, the, you know, to my brothers, to my sisters by, you know, uh, dealing with food. I, I love it. I love food. I, and I love the hospitality industry and I love, uh, changing, uh, somebody's day, you know, because when you're hungry and when you're hangry, you know, and you get to go to a place and in your mood changes, you know, you get a great atmosphere and, uh, you know, like you get good service, great hospitality and, you know, and good food, you know, it, it changes your attitude, you know, and I believe that. Yeah, no, so, it does. You know. It's uh, it's why we go out, right? Like I leave my house to go, not just because I want to eat and I'm hungry, but it's like I want to have an experience. I want to go sit down and like enjoy the environment. Yeah. Um. And uh. And yeah, it does. It 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 affects your mood. It, it brings you to this. You, you you become present, right? Yeah. You become present in that moment when you're sitting in the restaurant and ordering and hanging out with you're your looking at the menu, girl you and know? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like it's, it's very an in the moment thing. Yeah. Know? And I dig that. That's yeah. what his life's all about, man. So, 
Yeah, just going and getting. Uh, I just like going and getting ramen or something like that, you know. And you know what's funny is like I, I'm, I'm a pho guy, but I've never yeah. eaten ramen. Yeah. You know, like I, I think I went and did the Adam Richmond challenge. You know, the 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 flaming hot bowl of ramen, and I actually uh, did it. Okay. You know, I got my picture up on the wall and everything, but it's like this big, dude. It was fucking huge and like super hot. You know, like and it was like a gallon of fucking broth in there. And me and my Whoa. boy Scotty. Uh, when we were like in in LA, we just went to go, you know, put our toes in the fucking ocean, and we we're just like, yeah, let's go do this fucking thing. And you know, it was my my only experience with ramen. Needless to say, I didn't taste much because my taste buds were on fire, you know, from <laughs> fucking all the spices they fucking put in there. But yeah, I mean, I, it, it, ramen's on the list. You know, I got I got a high love for for uh, Asian style cooking, man. I love Thai food. I love, uh, you know, pho. I love, you know, good Chinese, some, some crispy duck, you know, like I'm a total fucking, I look at, look at this, look at this belly right here. You know, I love the fucking eat, you know, never trust the skinny, skinny chef. Freaking cheeseburger locker. <laughs> you never trust the skinny chef. I love that. That's great. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's true, man. Uh, uh, what, was, uh, what was I going to say? I forgot what I was going to say. I was coming in here. I was coming in hot with something funny to say, and I, <laughs> and I like something you said, and I forget chef, it. Yeah, chef threw it your, threw me right threw off. I was off. thinking about skinny chefs in my head, and I'm like, damn it, that's that's funny. <laughs> that is funny. All right, well, I lost my thing. What the fuck was I going to say? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm putting the camera on you. There you terrible go. host. I'm a terrible host for forgetting what I was going to say. Uh, who are you? I'm playing? just joking. Who are you playing music with? Uh, right now I am kind of on hiatus. I still, uh, I still mess around with the uh, Dallas every once in a while. I, uh, talk uh, with my boy Ruz, man, we want to get some, some stuff working. I have some ideas. Like I, I don't want to do original music cause I'm just like, I, what the fuck am I going to do that for? I, I can't go on tour, you know, like I, I'd rather just, you know, put together like a cool concept for, uh, you know, covers or whatever. Cause I, I, I like I like playing covers. It's a good outlet. You know, it um, forces me to learn new things outside of my comfort zone, um, you know, and, and uh, it just, it, it fits more to my, um, you know, to my to my lifestyle right now, you know, so I'm not really in the market for, and I haven't been ever since, you know, Dirty Paradise kind of uh, took a shit and, you know, and you know, we've been in Cracker Man and all that stuff too. Cracker but, Man! Uh, I was all, just always under the, you know, like my family's here and, and my heart and my you know, my presence has to be with them. So, you know, uh, it just seems more natural to me to, to just play covers. But one thing I do, um, I'm trying to develop, it's just so hard finding, you know, the right musicians and the time to try and get everything together is I want to do, uh, you know, like just, uh, uh, small tributes, you know, not like, all right, we're just going to do Queens of the Stone Age, or we're just going to do, you know, Foo Fighters or Pantera. It's just like, dude, let's just, you know, do a little role play and, uh, you know, and get some amazing musicians that got a lot of, a lot of tricks up their sleeves and can play like a lot of different styles. And, uh, and let's put five songs from Queens of the Stone Age. Let's do five Muse songs. Let's do some Depeche Mode, you know, let's do uh, Pantera fucking Mastodon, you know, and just the things that we want to do, you know, that we could put together like a huge medley of, of, uh, of songs, you know, for like a 15 minute block of just going from Steely Dan and fucking, you know, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers and fucking, you know, Beastie Boys, you know, and just, just kind of just run through the 15 minutes of just different parts and sections of songs, you know, like, uh, maybe it's, uh, you know, kind of lo loony or whatever, but it's just something that I've just been wanting to do, you know, like, it just seems like, like if I could find the right guys to, um, get that together so I could, you know, so I could make that work. I think that'd be great, man. Just go out there and just do a, a you know, a couple hours worth of different, tribute sets and even get some costume in there and you know stage effects you know and like just you know even if it's satire you put know on a show yeah just put on a fucking show yeah. and not be limited you know to to just one thing you know or just you know like play you know just a bunch of the same genre you know just skip around on genres too you know like i'd love to fucking play some some steely dan dude you know like some classic fucking gad you know some some purdy <laughs> bernard purdy 
you know like that's that's the the stuff I like to do you know I like to to keep it fresh you know to to keep you on your toes so yeah that that's kind of where I was thinking so you know if anyone out there you know and you 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 dig what I'm saying hit me up dude yeah maybe you want to put together some kind of like um my buddy Kinton does um these collaborative events right where it's like he brings in multiple singers and maybe a few extra lead guitar players here and there for each song mm mm-hmm. And uh, depending on what they're jamming, you know, they have someone singing Aerosmith or they have someone singing Zeppelin or they have someone singing ACDC, you know, they're yeah. like, they can collaborate with all their friends because it's Vegas, you know, and you have so many, so many people out there yeah. to work with. So like if you were going to jam some ACDC songs, I'd be like calling Tommy Elliott and being like, hey, Tommy, why don't you come sing some ACDC with me? You know, if you're going to, uh, you know, there's. You, I, Chaz, I don't think Chaz lives out here though. Chaz West, the, he does all that Zeppelin. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. I think Chaz. he lives in California. Yeah. But it's like you know you have access to all of these amazing people, these amazing talents. So like a thing that you're talking about doing in, in Vegas is definitely the place to do something like that. Yeah, you but I mean, it. when the when the hell is live music coming back? You know. Yeah, that's the big issue, right? It's yeah. the big and issue. Hope, hopefully after the election. I kind of feel like that's what's going to happen. Yeah. You know, like they're going to they're going to hold out and keep trying to fuck everything up until the election. You know, let's tank the economy and, and, yeah. you know, and blame it on our orange boy. Yeah, it's like uh let's deny federal aid and screw up our whole state cuz yeah, I want gum, the gum Democrats the to win. Yeah, cuz I don't want to have I don't want to give the president a win before the election. It's just like, dude, you really care more about stealing the election than you do about your own people you were put in charge of? Yeah. It's and pretty that's gross. Why and that's why no one's going to vote for you. Shit. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I, not no one, but you know what I mean. It, I don't want to talk about that because then, then I get too, uh, too yeah. opinionated and then, you know, pretty soon I'll be getting hate mail and fucking people unfriending me. And oh, yeah. Me everyone's like, oh, my God, how can you support the orange man? Yeah. And it's well, like, whatever. no one's supporting him. It's just we don't want to vote for your hateful ass party, you know, with no plan. <laughs> you have no plan. Yeah. You know, there's no. Like, That's we won. Thing. Now what do we do? Yeah. They're like, oh, well, um, Medicare for all? Psh, no. We're not really doing that. We never had any idea how to, you know, create that system. We just kept saying it. Yeah. Well, you're going to take, you're going to pay back all my college debt, right? No. <laughs> we just said that. Yeah, so no. you vote for us, yeah. dummy. If you when do we if, ever do that? If you die, that? we're giving that debt to your children. Yeah. You don't get rid of that. That We got that forever. So you can't even bankruptcy out of that. Why would we pay that off? Yeah, exactly. You know, but it got you to vote for us, didn't it? <laughs> uh, that's just how I feel about it. You know, I just feel like that whole party's just so Promise full of shit. And then, and then, yeah, and then, it's yeah, like, yeah, like you're going to patronize done. and lie to me and like just straight up bribe me for my vote. Like, yeah, you're offering me money to vote for you. That's not OK. That's not OK. Hmm? I don't approve. I yeah. don't approve. And our boy in orange is just putting in work, man. And that's yeah. that's why I'm going to vote for him because he fucking just kicks ass and he Look doesn't what he care what people fucking say. He is making just historical fucking accords in, in Israel, you know, and just like, dude, like, fuck peace in the Middle East, man. We're fucking, we're getting shit done, you yeah. know? So, I mean, it's just, you, you got to look at the positives. You got to do your research and you can't uh, be manipulated by the media. You know, like everybody's saying he's a fucking pedophile. He's fucking, you know, the next Hitler. It's like, dude, Give me some fucking proof that isn't a meme that some yeah. dude fucking created in his basement. Yeah, and it's yeah. like literally Joe Biden is the guy that you see sniffing little girls all the time. Oh, dude, it's like constantly creepy. on camera you, sniffing you see, little like, girls. Like how he positions himself around young girls and just the le- you read their aura yeah. is just fucking cringeworthy, dude. Oh yeah, they're you know, disgu- they're it, it's just out. like there's people that are like that. You know, I talked earlier about you know like the that transfer of energy and you know somebody comes comes into the room and they're feeling depressed or they suck the energy out of the room. There's, there's also that energy of, of, of dude, this dude looks a little rapey. You know, this dude looks, yeah. a, you know, a little, I mean, I'm not talking about anyone in particular. I'm just saying you get those senses about people where are just like, I, I'm going to keep my eye on you. Yeah. You know, like, I, I'm going to keep you right at arm's length, you know? So, I mean, you, you feel that energy, you know, and it just like those pictures, I don't know personally, you know, like if he's done anything like that, but I'm just saying those pictures, they, they speak a thousand words. He's been doing that forever, man. I've been, I've, anytime you see that fucking guy, you're just like, what is that? 
what is that? You know, like, no one's going to do anything about this creepy old fucking guy sniffing little girls, you know? It's, it's gross, man. It's yeah. gross. And uh, and then they're calling, they're calling his competition a pedophile, and it's like, man, is that not the kettle calling, the, or the, the pot calling the kettle black? Yeah. You know, and, uh, and as far as the fascism, I mean... Obviously, anyone that fucking thinks that the the Republican Party that's like super primed for capitalism is trying to become fascist. No, that's that's, 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 that's absurd. absurd. The, that's one absurd. thing, one thing, my buddy always told me he was a hardcore Republican even before, you know, like when I was like a Democrat before I even knew what the fuck you know political party I stood for. It was just my yeah. mom's a Democrat. I'm a Democrat. Yeah. He goes, you know, the 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 Democrat Party is about taking you from here or taking people from up here and bringing them down here and and he goes and then the republican party is about taking people that are down here and trying to lift them up here yeah you know and and it, that made sense to me you know like uh, before i i even tried to figure out what the fuck my political stance was and i i don't even really have much of one right now i just know that this election i'm gonna finally vote again i think the last time i voted i was 18 because i just never really fucking gave a fuck to give a shit to to care but i'm like this one is is monumental man it's like i don't want to see another four years you know or uh, i don't want to see what the next four years will be like with biden in office my boy's putting in work he's 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 you know doing good for the country look what he did for insulin yeah oh my god my son's a diabetic and and he's fucking lowering the cost of insulin to pennies yeah, exactly. You know why? Because because their the healthcare system are all a bunch of ball washing fucking bastards that are just trying to fucking keep Americans just sick enough to fucking work and still pay their fucking their health pre- healthcare premiums. Yeah, get them know? on as many prescription and, drugs as you can. Yeah, exactly. And then boom, you're fucking locked into the system. You know, so it, he's putting in work, and that, that's my general you know reason of why i'm fucking voting for him you know like as far as you know the kind of person he is you know if he's a bit of a douche you know fucking that's fine he's a giant douche people are fucking people and you got to remember that yeah you know like nobody is immune from their own self you know like their own ego whatever the fuck it is you know like they're gonna be human beings and you know like and just as long as they're not breaking you know some huge fucking awful laws you know like if, if he's you know like I, I don't believe the shit they say about him you know like as far as well, know, like the honest. russia stuff for instance it was like literally the other side of the party was the one collaborating with russia trying to fuck everything up and then they blame him for it and then the same thing right hunter biden is over there getting these amazing jobs and being put in charge of these companies and then he has no experience money, yeah. and and they're just like oh well that's an inappropriate use of power uh you're damn right it is you know but it's like they're no we're talking about trump asking about hunter biden what yeah that's not a what that's not that's not okay man like he's over there actually asking real questions and going what the fuck's up with this and they go oh well now he's trying to use his power to influence uh you know international alliances and it's like well he was asking about or inter- interfere with the election right and it's like well he's asking about hunter Bi- or they, biden's they tried, shady ass behavior they tried to fucking they tried to get him man you know and, and he stood tall you know yeah. and uh and and he was uh you know vindicated you know and and that's all this this whole past fucking three years has been has been the democrats trying to fucking get him out of the office instead of trying to put together a fucking plan instead of trying to you know get the right fucking candidates you know that's it's their whole thing was just trying to get trump out of office yeah. you know because he is fucking up the status quo man well he's ruining all their hands in the cookie jar he's been smacking hands out of the cookie jar left yeah. and right and that's why i'm voting for the fucking yeah dude, man he's, that's what he's, we need he's flipping the script dude and and i think that that's desperately what this country needs and i hope it it uh encourages you know new people you know to to run you know for for the presidency you know and like and obviously somebody with that name trump you know it's like dude i don't want i don't want to fucking see like some you know half-wit fucking artist you know try to yeah you know, try to fucking run for presidency just because they got a fucking household name you know what i mean but i mean i would like to see uh the 
somebody of that same kind of caliber, you know, like, hey, I didn't come from politics. I just want to do a good job. Yeah. You know, like like Trump is fucking doing, man. You know, so I. I like if, if, if Richard like, Branson wanted to run for president, right, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, I, 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 you know, like yeah, somebody like that's that. The dude from Virgin Mobile, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vir- okay. yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's just he's a he's an entrepreneur. He's one of the sex, successful entrepreneurs on the planet. Yeah, you know. But, he's, but then uh, you know, if that happens, you know, just you know, be prepared to to fucking have your life scrutinized. You yeah. Know? Well, people just don't want you in that seat. Yeah, because they want shit the way that it fucking used to be, man. Mm. Don't fucking rattle the cage. Keep things going the way it's been going. You know, fucking promise one thing and do a fucking another. That's it. You know, and that's that. that, that dude, our boy's just fucking that shit up, and that's why I think he's just he's great. He's that's why you got great. everyone in arms against him too, because it's like they've they've spent their entire careers, you know, decades upon decades, you know, they've been doing it longer than I've been alive, Mm -hmm. building these massive fortunes with our tax money. And, uh, and they just want to keep on doing that shit. And And he to shut up about it. Yeah. And then he goes in there and exposes it all and just starts chopping heads and taking money back. You know, he's like, you don't get all this giant chump, chunk of change you put into vacation funds for yourself. Shipping it out to fucking China. We're tax money. We're, we're what? We, we don't have industry here. We don't have fucking, you know, resources. We can't fucking make this stuff ourselves. Not with our, we can. Yeah. But we're not gonna It'll cost money. Yeah. And now it's putting the tariffs on China. It's like, Oh, well we have to now because it's too expensive to order from China. You can't just order from China all the fucking time. Yeah. You know? And so that, that shut that down so hard. And no one would have done that. No one in the political game would have pulled a move like that yeah. uh, to, to save our economy. You know, Because we're so indebted to China. It's ridiculous. And it's just getting worse. And we're not building a competitive uh, system to like actually solve the problem. Yeah. We're just continuing... To, to go into deeper and deeper debt with China. You got to break the cycle, man. And, and that's what our boy's doing. And that's why I'm fucking pro-Trump there. Yeah. I said it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I didn't know, man. We practiced one time yeah. and, uh, and and somehow we got talking about Trump and everything. And uh, and I'm just like, I fucking love the guy, man. I think he's great. I think he's one of the greatest fucking presidents, you know? I think he is too. And, uh, and I didn't know how you felt about it. <laughs> so it's like, now I'm getting that. I'm like, oh, okay. Because you were kind of like, oh, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll look into that. I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's uh, it's one of those things where I don't feel like getting into an argument with somebody. That's really the biggest issue, right? Because like you could come, you could have come on here and been like, I'm all about Biden. And I'd be like, cool, let's talk about Joe Biden. And I'd sit here and talk to you about it, man. And then and I'd, we'd I'd still bring, be fucking boys and afterwards, I'd, I'd man, bring because up my we're points. civilized people. Yeah, my, my opinion yeah. would still be the same. I'd still be like, well, I still think Trump's doing great, you know, and, and you still think and he's you're doing some good to, stuff. Yeah, and you're allowed but to think what you think. Let's and, talk about Biden and the blue party and all that shit, because that's what you're into. And I can do that, right? But mm. most people can't fucking have that conversation it's like it, because it's, I, it just goes i can again. only talk I'm, about the guy I'm i a like blue square not a red x you know? yeah. yeah like I had, I had a buddy tell me you know like we worked together and he goes yeah this was a game in my high school you know when you were a freshman you were either assigned a blue x or a red square yeah and uh you go up to somebody and you say hey, uh, what are are you blue x or red square and if they're a blue x and you're a red square you get to punch them you know, so it's just like, it's just like one of those stupid, like divide things. And it's so fucking childish. And that's what I feel like, like all this is, you know, are you a blue X? Or are you a red square? Well, I can't like you. I got to punch you. Yeah. You know? That's all you get. I mean, and you get more than that. You get people screaming at you. They were going to lose their friggin' mind, right? Oh like you, it just the fact that somebody could possibly uh, be voting for Trump is un reasonable to them they're just just remember your opinion doesn't fucking matter yeah that's all you you have like yeah do your own research be your own person think the way you want to think and let people be who they are yeah you know and i think that's one of the things that people have a big issue with is um they don't understand that there are no facts out there right especially in the age of disinformation that we Mm. live in oh my god there's much distrust Anything that you can come up to me with and say, I did a bunch of research and I have all these uh, documents that back up my side of the story. And I go, cool, well, give me two seconds real quick. I'll just Google that and say I want to look up the other end of it. I got 20 as well. 
Mm -hmm. I have 20 pieces of evidence that support the opposite side of your argument. And I didn't even do that much research. Right. And it's just like, oh, so there are no truths anymore. Right. Like there's just in all this time and all this effort. And I built my my persona and who I am based off of this. And and that's what really they're arguing about is is you're 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 denying their identity yeah you know who they identified with and that's the thing we talked about before of building yourself up with those ideologies and how that can fuck you up yeah you know once you're committed to it once it's your belief once it goes from being an idea to a belief or like like how all this kind of came around yeah this is a good conversation i dig it um that's where you that's where you fuck yourself yeah uh you 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 only have your opinion yeah your opinion is not a fact Okay, you're not bringing facts to the table. Yeah, now you can't convince me otherwise that you are bringing facts to the table because I can counter your argument, and it'll take me five seconds on my cell phone to look and up all kinds of shit that destroys your argument and want to scream at you yeah. and, and and demoralize you and call you names. Yeah, and so and we're no longer friends. Yeah, we're not going to be friends anymore, right? <laughs> and so, um, and so it's like until you can until you come to the 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 table understanding that you're just. Uh, repeating your opinion to me. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to repeat my opinion to you. And that's all that's going to happen. You know, like it's not, it doesn't have to be a war. It doesn't have to be the end all or anything. I'm not saying that you're a bad person because you believe something different than I do. Some people just like to fucking fight and argue. Yeah. And and one thing my mom always said to me. Well, they want to be right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't fight with the pigs. Yeah. Because you get dirty and the pigs fucking love it. Yeah. You know, like it's it's, (laughs) it's like, oh, yeah, I live for this shit. Come Mm. on, let's go. You're going down to their level. Yeah. You're going down to their level, and they want you down there because that's where they thrive in the shit pile. And slinging uh, shit, dude. Yeah, and they'll just sling shit at you all day. And if you're like, I'm gonna sling some shit back, it's like sweet. Now I have an excuse to be even more violent towards you. Yeah, and it's just like, ah, oh, this isn't worth it, was it? Talking to you isn't worth it because yeah, just, you're just, not gonna behave with any manners. And mm-hmm. that's why I, you know, like I, I'm a firm believer of just mind your fucking business. Yeah, keep it to yourself. And so that's why I try not to bring it up in public too much, right? Like, because you don't know if <laughs> you're running I just don't have into... the time or the patience yeah, for these conversations. I don't have time for your wackadoo bullshit, you know, right? Yeah, you're going to start get, screaming at me? You're going to start hour, screaming in my face over a this? Nice, calm hour without kids screaming in my ear. And, you yeah. know, just, just life happening, you know? I could talk about these things, you know? But, you know, fucking... Uh, other than that, I got shit to do, man. You know, I got, I got places to be. I got fucking deadlines i got stuff i got life life i got life i got yo. the illusion to tend to that's right it's always coming it's always got another problem for me to deal with well this is good man because it brought me back to a sense of of feeling that again you know like when you do get um wrapped up in in life and in the illusion you you forget that you know like it's always there you always know that it's there but it's good to revisit it and, and feel it again yeah yeah it really is man it's uh, it's everything. It's everything out there. You know what? I think that's a good point to call it. We only got like 12 minutes left. Sha na 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 live for today. Right? I like to. Th- <laughs> so how about I? How about we do that, man? We can get this thing, get this party on. That's a great place to end it, I think. And uh, so this has been uh, to the fullest with Jason Froberg. Uh, I love to thank my guest, Donnie Ducheco, for coming on my show. Really appreciate it. Oh, happy to be here, man. Always a pleasure. Love you, buddy. Love you too, man. And uh, I guess we're going to fade it out. And uh, na, 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 live Live for today. today. (laughs) Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching my podcast. You can check out more podcasts right here and subscribe by clicking right here. We are a new podcast every Monday morning at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.